Good day everybody and I am on my way to the park once again with the puppies in tow. Hello Trin. Little Trinity. She's very curious. Um, and uh, I want to talk real quick today about uh, a discussion I watched recently. I think it's uh, Jordan Peterson's most recent discussion where he's speaking with Michael Schellenberger. So Michael Schellenberger uh, put out a, um, a report, I guess, on WPATH. Uh, which stands for something I can't remember, quite remember. Basically, it's uh, the something something uh, about transgender health, transgender health, or trans yeah, transgender health is what it is. So basically, it's um, it's basically a teardown of the so-called standards of care, which was a document produced by a bunch of people who were so-called experts, uh, but were not really experts at all. They didn't do any real due diligence in terms of scientific uh, study or scientific follow-up uh, on people who've received treatments uh, to essentially uh, confirm or uh, collaborate with the mental illness associated with their condition. Uh, Jordan B. Peterson, uh, you know, gives his unvarnished view of things and uh, he, he gets a little heated about the hour mark talking to Schellenberger. Now, he's not talking to Schellenberger with any animus. He's uh, speaking about the issue with, um, with great vigor. Uh, he has very strong opinions about the whole thing. Uh, and then he goes on into talking about uh, the nature of uh, the nature of evil. <laughs> He goes way out into the, the philosophical weeds, so to speak. But it's worth watching. The whole conversation is worth watching. And uh, in his later part of the discussion, it got me to thinking about his upcoming book called uh, "We We Who Fight with God," or "We Who Wrestle with God." I think that's what it's called. One of the two. Anyway, uh, and and I'm really looking forward to this book because while I enjoyed Twelve Rules for Life, and I purchased Twelve More Rules, I'll be honest, I haven't read it yet. Uh, this one really seems to me like it might be the book that sort of uh, can be the can be the bridge between the secularist materialists and the uh, supernaturalist esotericists if that's a word you know uh, the, the whole thing is um, I think Bork Peterson is the guy to do it he is a, ostensibly a Christian, but he's a thinking Christian. He's not a theologian and he's not an apologist. He's a, you know, his experience in uh, maps of meaning or his, his point of view in maps of meaning, I think is gonna be distilled down in this book uh, to a more uh, accessible form for the lay person. This is my, intu this is my uh, prediction anyway, but I'm really looking forward to it. It comes out in, I wanna say April. April or May, I could be wrong, maybe it's later. Doesn't matter, I'm gonna pre-order it. But uh, but yeah, um, I was thinking about it last night as I was dozing off to sleep about the nature of good and evil. Isn't that funny, eh? You're falling asleep, normally you're thinking about the things of the day. Well, the things of the day for me last night was the nature of good and evil. And how, and I'll talk about this more about am in ammunition tonight. But just touching on it real briefly, we seem to have this sort of, um, this tendency to think or have this bias towards the notion that good will triumph in the end, right? And, and there's, a, there's a reason to think that beyond uh, mere hopefulness, right? I, I have a feeling that it, it stems from a shared collective experience in that we know we know injustice when we see it we know evil when we see it even if even if we don't subscribe to any particular religious doctrine people people understand unfairness people understand uh, injustice when they encounter it they understand predation they understand um, victimization and uh, and we have a tendency to believe at least I do anyway 
that ultimately it will not stand, that these things will be reconciled. And so I wonder where that comes from. And I, the only thing I can think it comes from is there is an inherent goodness in the universe. Now, I know what Twin will say and a lot of theologians will say, a lot of Christians will say, that's because of God. I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I know it's exciting. You're going to the park. Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily the case that there's a person or an entity called God that informs this or that uh, regulates this. I just have a feeling that um, as pattern seeking beings that we are and pattern pattern identifying creatures that we are, we tend to uh, we tend to have a bias towards orderliness and fairness and structure. And therein we make our rules for how we conduct ourselves in society. And uh, and while it might be it might be an under an underlying facet of the universe. I think I'm just gonna go into this way because why not? I have a pass. Hello. Um, I have a feeling that uh, there is some sort of order to the universe. There is some sort of sort of rules of conduct for the universe. It's getting a little heady, I guess, but what I mean to say is that uh, goodness will triumph over evil because the universe has a tendency towards goodness. Whether there's a religious uh, a mind behind that or a spiritual mind behind that or not, the structure of the universe dictates that um, entropy be kept at bay by those thinking beings that reside in it. Does that make any sense? I don't know. Might be a little bit too deep. But uh, and I swear I haven't taken any edibles. I've just I've been thinking about this about the nature of good and evil. I've been thinking about the nature of chaos and order. And I've been thinking about why we see more order than we do chaos. And I think why it's the same reason why we see that we you know we recoil saddle out. We recoil in horror when our our universe is disrupted by chaos in the form of a barking dog at the park. Anyway, folks, I am uh, almost at the park now, and I figure I may as well end this because you're not going to hear a word I say anyway. Tonight, Ammunition 49. We'll see you there at 10 o'clock on my channel. Take care. Bye-bye.